Hey, what is going on? Welcome to WebBay, where we're unlocking Webflow with custom code. Today, I'm looking at CodePen, this example by Ivan Grozdik that I thought was really cool. And I think it's a great opportunity to study linking two CMS collection lists that are on the same page. So I built this little example. And what we've got going on here is we've got text and images that are pulled from the same CMS collection, but in two CMS collection lists. And when I hover over the title here, it's going to swap out the image in the background. We'll get started by looking at how the Webflow project is set up first, and then I'll walk you through the JavaScript code step by step. Hey there, WebBay. All right, so first thing we'll look at is the CMS collection called Yosemites, because I don't know how to name CMS collections. If I go into this one, we've got El Capitan, and we've got an image for it, and oh, look, we can um, get alt text for free from my new extension update. Anyways, uh, so we got some alt text in there, a URL, and that is it, we've got three of those. So I'm gonna save that and come back to the project and then we'll look at Navigator. You can see I have page set up. Within page, I have my custom cursor. I'm not gonna cover custom cursors in this video. Uh, I'll do that in another one or you can look at the zillions of other custom cursor videos out there. And then we've got a CMS collection. This one is holding all of our headings and then one holding our images. So let's have a look at the image one first. The main thing about this one is that it's position fixed so that it scrolls with us as we go through. And that's really all we have on the wrapper. And then if we look at the list images, I set the height of 100 viewport heights here and flex center center so that we can center all of our images. Now these are gonna have position absolute and we're gonna set overflow to hidden and width of 70%. This is just kind of how you would control the size here. And that's really all we wanna do with the collection item. The big thing about this position absolute here is that that makes them stack on top of each other. So also they're stacked, if they're in a specific order, the last one in how we've sorted it, in this case we're sorting alphabetically, is gonna appear on top um, because of how things are stacked with Z indexes and all that in the document flow. As a child of the collection item image, we have image height. This is just a div that has 100% uh, of, the, of the width. So we could put that in there if we wanted to. And then we're using the padding top trick to set the aspect ratio to 16 by nine by making this 56.25%. I've got overflow hidden and position relative. This has to be position relative because inside of that we have our image that's position absolute uh, set to cover that whole container with 100%, 100% and fit cover so that we're maintaining that aspect ratio. And of course, this is linked up to our CMS collection list. Now the other collection list we have on the page is this wrap headings. So if I go ahead and expand this, I'm just giving this a margin top of 40 viewport heights so it starts looking like it's in the middle and then width of 100% and then we come into the list. This is a, another flex box so that we can center everything. Make sure you align center so that your link doesn't span the whole width of your of your parent. We just want the, like we, we only want it to, when the user's clicking on the title to actually take them to the link. And then we have our item heading. These are just, this is just setting the um, bottom margin on that. And then we have our heading link. This is set to position relative with a Z index of two so that our link is always on top. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We actually have two texts in here. So the first one we have is heading with this text style outline. This is from our custom code embed so that we can get that outline effect on the text. I have text style outline right here. You wanna be careful with what font you're using. I'm using Lato in this case, but if you use some other ones, you might see some overlap like Montserrat right here. Uh, pretty ugly with that. So you, you may need to get creative with how you're importing your text. Um, but here with Lato, it works just fine. And now if we look at heading wrap, this is what's going to control that kind of fill effect that we have on our text. So right now I have a combo class of hide on that with height set to zero. And all that we're going to do is we're going to delete hide this class. And as we delete it or we add it, it's going to animate that text. So We've got the base height set to 0%, but you can see as we increase that to 100%, it is going to animate all nicely. And that is because we have a CSS transition applied to the base class. So if I delete hide here, we've got transition of height is 400 milliseconds on an ease, but I'll add hide back. The other thing, we're using CSS transitions on the images as well. So if I come back to the image, and I, I look at the opacity and the transform transitions. I've also brought the brightness down on these images just a little bit, just to make the text stand out a little more. And then if we add hide on here, then those go away. So we'll go ahead and publish this. That's really all that we're gonna need to set up our Webflow 
project. All right, so looking at our code here, I've just got a really bare bones setup for what we wanna do when the window load event occurs. So we have this add event listener on the window object. We're gonna call the event of load. And when that happens, we wanna call our function init. And that is defined down here. So the pseudocode that I wrote here is that first we wanna get references to all the elements on the page that we'll need. So this is the links, the wrappers on the headings there and the images. And then we'll loop through all the links and we'll add a hover event listener for each link. When we're hovering, we want to add the class hide to every element with the class dot heading with the class heading wrap. And then we want to remove hide from heading wrap element associated with that link. Next, we want to add class hide to all images with the class image. And then we want to get the image with the same index as this link and remove class hide. For the initial load, we're going to remove hide from the first image and the first heading wrap. So let's have a look at how to actually write this code. To get our references, we're just going to use the document.querySelectorAll function that we've become very used to. So I've got document.querySelectorAll. I'm just selecting by class name here. We're selecting everything with the class of heading link, everything with the class of image, and everything with the class of heading wrap. Next, we're going to loop through all of the links. So we'll call links.foreach, and for each takes a function, and we're going to run that function on each link within what's called a, this is going to return a node list right here. And that function gets a reference to each individual link that's in that node list, as well as the index. Index is like the number of the link within that link's node list. So next we wanna add the hover event listener for each link. So we'll just say link dot add event listener and the event we'll pass is the mouse enter, which is just the hover in event. And then we're gonna give that a function as well. So we're opening up our function declaration here. And then we're gonna get all the heading wraps that we've already gotten and we'll call for each on those, which means we're gonna loop through each one and then we'll get each individual one, we'll just call it wrap. And then to the class list, we're gonna add that class of hide. Now we wanna remove hide from the heading wrap element associated with this link. So on this link, which is noted by this, this keyword, we'll call query selector and we'll find heading wrap. That's gonna find the heading wrap associated with that link. And then we'll access the class list and we'll remove hide from that class. Um, list, which we know we've added it because we added them all here right before. All right, next we're going to add class hide to all images with class image. So we'll loop through our entire images node list. We'll get each image and we'll access the class list and we'll add hide, very similar to what we're up doing up here with headings wrap. And then we're going to get images of index. So this is unique because we want to make sure that we're accessing the index. Um, the link associated with that index and the image associated with that index. So since these are both ordered, I should show you this in Webflow. On the list here, this is ordered alphabetically and the list here is also ordered alphabetically. So we can ensure that the index between the link heading title and the image will match. Lastly, when we have the initial page load, we wanna take the first image and the first heading wrapper and we wanna remove the class hide from those because we've got them set up in Webflow here with the class of hide already on them. If I went and click heading wrap and I check, you see we've got hide on there and image we've got hide on there. So we had already published our Webflow project. So let's go ahead and save and refresh. And now we can see we've got this really nice animation with our CMS lists all linked up. I hope that really helped you. If it does, please subscribe and like the video. It helps me a ton and I will see you in the next one. Yeah.